Hi guys! Today we're going to be making the actual 2D art for our animated 2D rig. However, I apologize in advance if you aren't really much for realism, I chose this reference because I want to teach you how to use dynamic bones. So we will have layers of hair that move up and back down based on what the bones of the animal are doing. And you don't have to animate the hair at all, how cool is that? You can apply this to other artistic references or not use a reference at all. I chose a reference because some of you are still learning and might not just off the top of your head know how to draw a lion. I got this from iStock and I'll link it below. After you find a reference, the first thing you should do is get a good drawing brush. In my case, nothing is actually happening. Oh. There we are. I'm using Lazy Nazumi. Without it, I can do this. With it, I can do this huge difference, and if you switch to the pencil tool, your life will be over. So definitely go with anti-aliasing, use the brush tool. You want to go with as huge of image as possible and scale it down at the end. You never know if you're going to need prints, posters, and you will hate yourself if you make a small image and you make it big and you actually need printed work. It will have to be eight times bigger than what you currently have, and you will have to redraw it. You're welcome. So where do you even start? Okay, so right here we have hair. And we'll want a neck there. You kind of have to eye a female lion and get an idea of where this jawbone really is. And then start to draw in where you think the neck will actually be. And in my case, that's a little bit off. It's going to be here. So we're going to have a shoulder blade that's coming down here. The legs coming here. In the back, we have a strong muscular neck on this male. So our neck is right here. The shoulder blade right there. Probably. And then the skull on cats is always a lot bigger than the neck. Is that where the neck connects on lions? On lions, it's right at the curve of the back of the jawbone. So right about in this part right here. So we need a more defined curve. Something like that is going to work. All right. Now disregard this layer entirely. And this will be our line art. Start with places that you can visibly see. And you don't have to follow every line like this because what will end up happening, let me get another layer and we'll call this white and this will be our testing layer. So that just <laughs> does that even look kosher? None of this looks very good. So don't do that. Wait. This layer. Don't do this layer. You just want to use your instincts. So disregard the hair. Don't draw in white. Try to use somewhat thick lines. I mean, you can color them over. And I know, I just blew your mind right in this moment. Why did I do this? 
because you're going to have visibility layers. Again, this is going to be rigged. So we're going to have a leg that's right here, and the leg is going to be moving over the body back and forth. So we need a base body underneath. And parts like this in Unity on 2D rigs, you can't stretch the skin out when the leg moves. So you have to get creative and just sort of disregard it. If you put a line over here and attach it to the leg, this part is also going to want to move back and forth. So don't attach this part to the leg. And this part here is not really going to move with the leg. If you're going for a really realistic 2D model, you might want to actually make this part separate so it can move up and down, or even make the entire spine separate so it'll be easier to transform. It depends what type of rig that you're using, like with Anima 2D you can't really get away with that. It doesn't have a lot of flexibility. So it's going to be somewhat of a challenge if you're coming out of realistic 3D models to get all of this where you want it to go, and it will take a little bit of practice. Let me zoom in, get my stabilizer on. That line weight is rather thin. I am going to take the hindquarters back a little bit. Oh my goodness, the brush stabilizer doesn't quite work with the eraser tool. And then the leg will also go over this, so the leg will have a little bit of motion in the ocean. Please go away, boyfriend. Hey, <laughs> terrible if I turn it on. I know I have to turn my art on and off with a toggle. How stupid is that? Alright, so the body is pretty much done. I'm going to take it over the shoulder blade here. I'm going to turn the duplicate. This layer can just be destroyed because it's useless. Take this the white layer over it and we'll just lower it down a bit so you can see the lines as you're going. I usually prefer gray. It's a lot less straining on the eyes. <coughs> so here we have that chest. With cats, it comes down a little bit narrow. There we are. I'm having Vietnam flashbacks, apologies to your grandfather, about all of the coloring books that I just really hate to do. I don't like doing coloring books, don't tell anybody. I will do them, they're quick cash, but ugh. Alright, that looks good. This line weight here, it depends on the art style you're going for. Like, you're not going to be seeing th this area or this entire area. <laughs> well, maybe here in the stomach. So. With that line weight up here, it looks really funky the way it is. So the choices are to stroke over it and make it more heavy or to go for a thinner style. And in truth, it doesn't really matter what you do. You can have a thin line or you can have really thick lines. If you're very bad at coloring, I would definitely go with the thicker lines. I drew on my white layer. That'll do. Let 
Dang it. Yay. If you're a perfectionist, this profession will be your death. Alright, as this video is approaching 10 minutes and nobody likes to upload a whole sack of potatoes, I'm probably going to cut this one here. In the next one, I'm going to try to fly through and not bore you to death with just really quickly getting in the other limbs and then the hair and we will have a game ready lion.